The key to getting God's attention is not rolling on the ground. It is the degree to which your life aligns to kingdom come. More than fasting, more than prayer, more than Bible study, the key that causes God to invest his jealousy upon a man and stay there until you rise is the degree to which his kingdom can come through you. Listen very carefully. I have seen that it is not difficult for God to lift the people. It is not difficult for God to lift an individual. The only issue is what there is nothing kingdom that is represented in our desires. It is within his power to make rich. It is within his power to grant a man influence. It is within his power to cause a nation and a generation to hear you. But to what degree will his purposes be represented in your pursuit? The difficulty in our Christian experience is, is, is a misrepresentation of God's potential. It looks like God is slack. It looks like God is slow. But the key is that God is vetting the purity of our desires until he finds himself there. You are not going to get his attention. You may cry. God is touched with the feelings of your infirmity, but he's only moved when he finds himself in your agenda. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you. To behold you as my King For your glory I will do anything Just to see you To behold you as my King Want to be where you are Gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. Listen. Surrendering your heart is not the key to salvation. Believing the gospel and receiving his life. Is the key to salvation but surrendering your life is the key to be used by God please understand this the condition to be saved is not to give your heart to the Lord it is to receive his life but when it has to do with doing business with God within the context of a generation the price is death I have said it again and again that the price for all of God is all of you until all of you not your money leave your money leave your car leave your skill leave your talent no until you die it's a realm in the spirit called galatians 2 20. i have been crucified with christ it's a mystery nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and this life today that i live in the body i live by the faith i am motivated by another reality i have lost touch of my ambitions and my desires i have brought everything under like a woman submitting to her husband i have become a bride and a bride indeed his desire has become my obsession i do not seek anything for myself my desire is for him to be glorified john 17 and verse 1 jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven to pray and he made a statement that was very interesting he says father the hour has come glorify now thy son that thy son that's the formula that's the formula that if i be lifted from the earth I will draw all men to myself and because they cannot see me they will see you who is the object of the sacrifice but when they come to you you are smart enough like an usher to redirect them are we together now pastor and his wife 
acted my message so beautifully here when pastor ushered his wife gave her an opportunity to share a few things and she turned back and beautifully honored him i said this woman understands kingdom because you see in theology we call it the reflection principle nobody can glorify himself your glory is invested in another and the excellence of what comes out of you is how you are glorified are we together now so the father cannot glorify himself his glory comes from the son the son cannot glorify himself his glory comes from the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify itself the glory of the church comes from its dominion over principalities and powers and creation it's a principle of shared dominion it is the son that glorifies the father it is the church that glorifies the ecclesia that glorifies the son and it is the dominion of the church over creation that is where the glory of the church is so it is important for us to understand that this call to the faith life that we call christianity is not a journey unto pain and frustration in hope that we'll hear the sound of a trumpet one day that is that is a very well-meaning but destructive ideology it is the kind of ideology that has produced the social economy that we see in africa is the kind of ideology that has been responsible for the prevailing power of darkness are we together very very important and so we must understand therefore that we are not fully carrying out what we call the great commission just because men are getting saved that is one side of the victory but is being cancelled out by the loss of the darkness that looms over a territory there are two keys to kingdom advancement write them down please number one is called evangelism number two is called influence there are two biblical keys that make for kingdom advance number one is called evangelism number two is called influence micah chapter 4 please evangelism is very important we know that we have been greatly mentored we know how to stretch ourselves from border to border but here is the other dimension it says but in the last days kapu shale kapu siata, the mountain so the house of the lord is a mountain on its own and the bible says it shall be established at the top of other mountains and it shall be exalted above all the hills look at all look at the way this scripture messes with your intelligence do you flow to a mountain can a mountain be placed on other mountains hmm. verse 2 and how many nations many nations shall come when you want to understand this you must study solomon solomon was a man who demonstrated the power of the influence of the kingdom on the excellency of the understanding hearts that he carried solomon compelled the attention of all the kings that were within his sphere but there was a strange woman from ethiopia who would not come because gentiles don't come they come to your light but kings don't come to your light they keep watching they have lights too they have results kings come only to the brightness of your rising please follow me we have something we have a serious journey to take tonight Sheba continued to hear of the hand of God upon Solomon but it was not compelling enough for her to come she kept watching the same way they are watching you and a time came when Sheba herself had to come and she came with her plenty and the Bible tells us theologically speaking for over six months she continued to tour the palace of Solomon and at the end of it the Bible says she said half of this was not told me she had no breath in her 
every generation will not be confused there is a generation that will get this thing yes sir i'm going to show you that generation because whoever that generation is we know that they are a chosen people they are a kingdom of priests a peculiar people a holy nation the bible says that generation you will know that generation by the signature of a body of knowledge they will access called marvelous light you know that this is a generation signified by prophecy by the depth and the degree of spiritual illumination that they have access to the bible calls it marvelous light are we together if we are together please say amen